Yes. Welcome everyone to our April meetup with special guest Kira Hyde from the KH Studio. See, I've given the tip away already about the naming of your business. So welcome wherever you are in Victoria, Australia, the world. Um, I think both Kira and I are coming from Zsa Zsa Rurung country uh, and uh, a beautiful landscape that we live in wherever we are. So for those of you who haven't been to a Startup Centre Victoria meetup before, this is where we share the very personal startup journey of businesses that have already been out there and doing it. Uh, they know what it's like and it's really useful um, to have this conversation from a, a totally different perspective of someone um, that's been before us and uh, hopefully that will be um, really, really useful for you as you um, go along on your journey and we never stop learning in business. I love listening to businesses that scale up to or change their business model. So, Kira, thank you so much for agreeing to share your personal journey because this is very different to what you usually do, isn't it? Definitely. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And yes, I've never really spoken much about my startup journey. Um, yeah, so when so re when reflecting on it, it's, um, yeah, it's going to be quite fun. And hopefully I'll, uh, yeah, share some things that really made an impact for me and hopefully will make an impact for you as well. Um, I'm a big fan of learning through others. And uh, I think that's a really imp important journey as a business owner too. Yeah. All right. So let's just start with a snapshot of the KH mm -hmm. Studio. Where are you at now? And it just sets the scene for what we discussed that came, oh. comes before it. Yeah, so the KH Studio is pretty much a full-service creative marketing studio. We do everything from branding, websites, um, marketing, social media, uh, photography, but really what we do comes back down to bold digital solutions. So creating beautiful brands and functional, beautiful, intentional websites. And then from there, we tend to work with clients on um, a bit of everything. And um, yeah, that's been quite organically grown that way. Um, we're an all-woman team at the moment. That might change someday. Um, we've got a really diverse range of contractors that we work with locally and also beyond. So we've got people overseas. Um, we've got people who um, are all over Australia as well. And um, for me, I think that really sets us apart, um, I guess, from a lot of other um, companies locally too. Um, yeah, our clients are essentially anyone from startup phase to established business. Um, and we essentially, yeah, help people at the very beginning. And then as they continue to grow in our journey, um, we grow with them and our services change and adapt um, depending on their needs. So we're, um, yeah, we definitely work on up-leveling brands and that's probably one of my favorite things to do. Okay, well, you know your stuff, but now we're going to hang you out to explore and reflect mm -hmm. on what it took to get you to this point. Yeah. So take us back to your startup point. Why did you start a business? Well, so take you back to 2017. I was 20 years old. I literally just graduated university had no idea what I wanted to do still after getting my degree, um, but I had a background in PR, communications, journalism, um, marketing as well. And um, I decided to go and travel. And really I fell into this, you know, amazing young, you know, journey of traveling, but I found myself, you know, I was lacking challenge. I was lacking motivation and inspiration, even though I was traveling and having such an amazing time, I started to explore the online space a lot more. And um, within a month of traveling overseas full time, I started planning the beginning of my business um, and fell into freelancing. And I did that for about two years, fully sustained my travels, which was a God, once in a lifetime opportunity, really amazing fun. Um, and then when I came back to Australia, um, yeah, I was able to set up my business as you know an actual company and really build it out from there. So um, my startup journey is probably a little bit different to others. So it's, yeah, interesting being able to talk about it and um, yeah, share some of that. But it all starts in the same place. We all we all start with an idea and we nurture that. We we you know see if it's viable. We put it out there to the world, um, whether you're in a local space or online. And um, yeah, we see if we can actually make something of it. And um, I'm really fortunate because of my background. I think I was able to do that really well from starting up. So. 
from the ideation time, you know, thinking, yeah, I think I want to do this. I think I want to try it. Um, I started building my brand, creating myself a logo, website, you know, obviously I do have those skills. So very fortunate there. Um, but connecting with other business um, people online, joining Facebook groups, really just diving into that. Um, I spent about a month in pure development phase. Um, trying to create this brand that I would then put out there just as a freelancer. And um, yeah, I launched it. And within seven days of launching, I literally had seven clients. Um, it was just one of those amazing kind of um, yeah experiences at the very beginning. I set that foundation. I spent, you know, um, at that point, it was just a month, but purely working every day, developing um, that brand. And yeah, and everything, um, yeah, it all started from there. So I was I was chuckling as you were using a lot of that language. I, I should have mentioned at the beginning that Kira is actually one of our masterclass presenters uh, with the pre accelerator program. So she's lived and breathed the startup and testing it and doing it lean and mean and working out all those things. And uh, I know that everyone really enjoyed your masterclass last year. So um, I'm hoping we'll get you back again this year, Kira. But no pressure online. No pressure. <laughs> Um, so really exciting. You adapted a business model to suit your purpose at the time. Now, when we first spoke about your biggest learnings, so I'm bringing you forward, you're back to regional Victoria and suddenly you're growing. And mm. you did talk about your keys to success and I used it in the promo. So there's no surprises here. It was about know your numbers, create a system, delegate and build a network of contractors and build your board. So I'd really like to unpack that because it's all very well to say this hypothetically, but how does it work? What does it look like? So if we could yeah. add those one at a time, know your numbers. Can you explain to us how that works for you? Yeah, definitely. I think as a, um, well, obviously as a business owner, you have to wear a lot of hats and you are in charge of not just delivering an amazing service, but you're in charge of HR, you're in charge of financials, you're in charge of, you know, your legal, you're in charge of everything within your business. And one of the things that we tend to just like, oh, I'll just trust that with an accountant or a bookkeeper is your financials. But there's so much that you can do, um, you know, and there's so much that you should do. And I found that I was really just making it up as I went along, particularly in the early days. Um, and I definitely wasn't charging my worth. I definitely wasn't, um, so I wasn't pricing accurately. Um, I didn't have the confidence or the understanding of accounting and bookkeeping and really knowing, you know, what to do about BAS, what to do about tax. Um, and I just kind of had this faith in the account that they'd figure it all out for me. And um, it took probably year three in business when I started growing really significantly. Um, by that point, I had um, probably, yeah, one full-time contractor um, and then um, another, so that was overseas, and then I had another contractor locally. So I had people, I had, you know, livelihoods that was I was responsible for. And, um, you know, we hit this huge growth and I knew that I was going to end up with a huge tax bill, um, you know, and because the way it works, you know, when you when you hit that first round of growth, you know, BAS doesn't come out. Um, the way it's, it, it's set up um, with your financials, it's quite, when you don't know it, um, it's really complicated. And so, you know, I ended up getting hit with these big bills and I was like, oh my God. Um, and thankfully I had some things set up in place and that was my only year of ever being stressed about um, really financials because I didn't have the backing that I needed. And so now, even now, you know, I, I'm very comfortable to say I've never, ever paid anything late. Um, I don't have to stress about paying my team. I've always got savings and surplus. Um, you know, I've always just got total control of my financials. I project, you know, everything that we're earning for the next 12 months. So I know where to fill in the gaps. And a lot of that comes down to learnings. And it's, you kind of have to, you know, learn enough about being a bookkeeper and accountant in some ways and take that responsibility on yourself. Um, even though I've got a super amazing trusted support team now, I still am the one looking at my numbers every single day. Um, every week, every month, I'm sitting down with my team and we're going through this. And it's just one of those things that if you don't, you can end up in dire straits. And I've had you know, clients that have come to us and they've hired us for a brand website, we've launched this incredible brand, incredible website, everything is set up to succeed. And yet they fail in the first two years because they didn't put enough money aside to pay their bass. And quarter after quarter, they ended up flagging behind. 
And, you know, they ended up in a situation where they owed too much money and it was easier to get out than keep going, um, you know. And I feel like there's this, when you're going through growth, you know, you're kind of adapting to the expenses. Your expenses are growing, your income's growing. And, you know, you tend to spend a bit more as well. When you're in growth phase, you're like, oh, I've got all this money. Yes, now time is to buy more equipment. Now's the time to buy that course. Now the time is to um, treat my team. And if you're not looking at your financials properly, you're going to end up in a really, really tough situation. And over the years, I've been doing this for nearly eight years um, now, and I have seen so many businesses fail, so many incredible businesses fail. Um, I've had clients just crippled by by this stress and um yeah so knowing your numbers and getting on a good foot from day dot and it's as simple as putting like I'll tell you my strategy I literally put money aside every single week for bass with like before I even pay myself bass goes into one account tax savings goes into one account I'm predicting how much tax you know I might have to pay at the end of the year which is hard but um you do your best that goes into one account, savings goes into another account because you really need to have a couple months worth of income, you know, particularly if you start bringing on a team and hiring people, you really got to have that fallback. And if you can do that from day dot when you may only be earning a few hundred dollars each week, um, you know, if you can start doing that from the beginning, it just really sets you up for success and it allows you to grow along with your business. So as a business owner, more often than not, we pay ourselves, well, it depends on, you know, who you are and how, how you like to work, but we tend to not pay ourselves as much from the beginning. Um, so we start on a lower wage or we take money out when we need. But, you know, if, if you do this consistently, you can pre-plan your pay rises. And, um, and that's one of the, you know, hardest things about being a business owner too. You look at all these, you know, other employees um, in different organizations and they get regular pay rises as a business owner. Sometimes you miss out on those. Um, so when you can set things up really well, um, it just allows you to have the freedom to do that. And in my book, you know, why else would I have a business if it wasn't to live an amazing life, have the freedom, you know, um, have enough income to support the things that I want in life to, you know, um, flow into my actual personal life as well. Um, there's, you know, why would I wear this many hats if, um, yeah, if I wasn't reaping the rewards? So that's why that's, I'm not an accountant at all. Financials um, are not my jam, but you have to make them your jam. You've got to make them something that you're really comfortable um, with even if it means getting uncomfortable first. <laughs> great, great advice. And you said something very early on that was, is important for business owners and it was know your worth. I, mm. I love that. Really? Um, and, and how did you go about knowing your worth? Because your worth can actually change with as the business grows too. How, how do you establish what your worth is? And I know your service sector um, products it might still be uh, a different model again and then you get into art it's a whole new scene yeah, yeah definitely so I am a service-based business model so um, you know our I guess revenue streams are broken up between we've got one-off services we have recurring services um, we have affiliates um, that we earn money from as well as referral bonuses um, and you know partnerships that we have as well as digital products. So with a wide range of services um, or with a wide range of different revenue streams, um, it's really difficult to know how to price them depending on, um, but there's kind of a bit of a formula. Um, I'm really fortunate that I've worked with an incredible um, money coach and, and um, financial advisor who's a brilliant friend of mine and client. And um, so I learned this pretty early on, but it's just a matter of, you know, Instead of just pricing where we're, what we think we should be charging or looking at the competitors, instead, literally break it down. I'm all about systems. Um, everything in my business is very systemized. So I look at, all right, how many hours does it take to actually create this? How many hours does it take to deliver it? What are the expenses um, in order to produce this? Um, and if you can kind of break it down to that, then at least you've got that, you know, the baseline of what you have to charge. But then also, you know, then you have to put a factor in, you know, what is it worth? What is this creative, brilliant idea worth? The fact that someone else doesn't have a mind like me or someone else doesn't have the, the talent um, to paint like I do. Um, you know, how, how do you price that? And um, it's definitely then a matter of 
comfort zones, um, challenging yourself, um, really working out where you want to be. And then um, if you work out where you want to be, you can kind of backtrack and see where you're at now and, and what you should be charging to then get to that point too. And um, in business as well, you know, every financial year, um, you can charge a little bit more for your services. It's very normal to have increases. So sometimes starting off conservatively, um, as long as you're not completely undercharging, um, starting off conservatively is a good way to go, particularly when you're in startup phase and you're really just wanting to, to well, test your product, test your service. You want to build testimonials, um, really get that feedback from clients, build out your sales pages online, um, you know, or if you've got a bricks and mortar store, really just make sure that space is beautiful. And then as you start growing and putting more into your business, more time, more energy, more investment, then your services have to go up too. Your, your pricing has to go up too. Um, so it is a hard question um, to answer, but um, there are lots of facets, but I just recommend starting with the, you know, the actual baseline and then start um, building it from there. Great answer. Now, you've already alluded quite heavily to systems. We're getting the sense you like systems, mm -hmm. but you also talked about how you can delegate and perhaps automate some of these systems. What what are the been the good ways you found to get those systems working well for you? Yeah, well, as a startup, you are or you know, in this in this, you know, startup journey, you are going to get to a point where you are overworked, you're overrun, you're doing a million things, and you need to start looking at how to make things more efficient for yourself, for your business, and how to profit more from your services by maybe automating and systemizing certain elements. So you can still charge the same amount or more, but you've automated some of that. So it's actually less of a drain on your time and resources. Um, so that's something that I've always been really obsessed about, um, particularly because I'm a website designer. That's um, a big, big portion of what I do. So that's very, um, you know, systems heavy. And um, I'm obsessed with client experience. So anything I can do to systemize, I will. And, you know, for me, I've always started out by mapping out pretty much everything I do. Just put it all down on paper. You'd find that, you know, that clarity of writing out, this is my service, this is every touch point, this one staff member needs to do this and I have to do that um, or, uh, you know, why are we spending two hours doing this when we could just automate that somehow? Surely there's like a software that can automate that email and then trigger that response so then it goes in our CRM system. Like, surely there's a way to do that and it's just looking at um your your current processes and and thinking of a different way to do it um that's yeah that's hopefully going to take out less time um you know for you and um i'm really motivated that by this because i want more hours in my day i want to enjoy my life i want to and you know i, I want to live a really good life outside of my business too as much as i love it and as obsessed as i am with the work that i'm doing and the clients i get to work with um systems are just so great <laughs> but I know they don't come natural to a lot of people too and they didn't for me at the beginning as well it's a lot of trial and error it's a lot of learning um yeah and asking for help as well there are lots of you know amazing um you know online blogs resources courses you can take um I have done so much of that over the years and um yeah it's a game changer it's an investment of our time that ultimately yeah. will save us time. And why not use technology? It's um, yeah. it's for us to benefit from. So great. Now, you've also mentioned delegating and yes. building a network of contractors. So you referred to your associates before, but or is it more than just associates? How, how, explain to us how this works. Yeah, so as I, um, I probably have to backtrack a little bit. As I, um, we hit like this big um, growth era in our business and I ended up hiring a lot of people. Um, and so I had a few, like hiring a few local employees. I had to bring in lots of different contractors um, and, you know, and it was really, really great to be able to bring on all these people um, and to, and to invest in, in that and growing a team. But we found that we actually hit a bit of a, um, with that growth, 
you really got to adapt to the growth. Hiring sometimes isn't the solution, um, but delegating is really important. So you've got to try and find a sustainable way to do that. And so um, we went through kind of this phase where six months, we just had so much growth and so many people, and it was just a lot. Um, and then I realized I was trying to like measure up my business to other businesses locally. I felt that I had to hire because everyone else was hiring. I had to do things the way everyone else is doing it. When really, you know, I could have scaled back the way that I hired my team and I could have just, instead of just hiring a person to do a lot of different jobs, I could just hire contractors that were really brilliant at what they do and I can hire them for smaller portions and delegate those smaller portions to them and um, end up having, you know, a really beautiful team that works seamlessly and is actually highly skilled um, in their specific tasks rather than hiring and then hoping and, and training and trying to get them to um, to have all the answers, um, if that makes sense. So delegating was always a really um, important thing for me to nail. And it's something that I've, it's actually probably one of my biggest challenges as well, because I am a bit of a, I, I love having creative control. Um, I remember my first hire, um, I brought her um, Pauline, she's still with us. Um, and yeah, absolutely amazing. Um, she came in on my first year of business. Um, and she was just a contractor and throughout the growth of my business, her roles change and she's had her own kids and, and everything as well. So, um, it's been really beautiful, but she was such a good lesson, um, to begin with. And then, yeah, as you, as you grow as a business, you end up, yeah, hiring different walks of life, uh, people who live different walks of life and you hire different personalities and you just learn so much about people for me and what works for me is delegating, um, to the experts. And um, I love to be able to reassure our clients as well that, um, you know, we are actually delegating to experts and we have this beautiful network of um, contractors um, locally from, gosh, graphic designers, artists, videographers, photographers, um, you know, copywriters. Um, we've got an, um, an amazing um, yeah, community um, of contractors that all kind of do some incredible work here at KH. Did that answer the question? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and of course, it's a changing um, employee situation now too. A lot of people like that contractor or vice versa. And it's yeah. about looking after your people, no matter whether they're in-house employees exactly. or contractors online, but getting the right people and keeping them. So well done. Uh, so the last one, build your board. Now we might be a bit puzzled about this. Explain to us what you mean by build your board. Well, if you look at like an organization, a big organization, you know, they've got all the different levels of employees and then they've always got some kind of executive team or partners or or a board of people and they sit down together at this, I'm imagining a round table, and they're the ones that make the big business decisions. They're the ones that everyone has their, their um, they've got a purpose, they've got a, um, a reason for being there, they've got an input, um, an impact that they can each individually make and, and they're the ones that really allow a business and an organization on a large scale to continue to grow and develop and, um, and evolve. But when you look at a startup or a small business, that's not possible. It's, it's, it's really difficult to, to have that. It's hard enough finding, um, you know, and retaining employees, you know, um, you know, within your business and, and finding the right people who want to grow with you when it's a small business. So um, I find that for me, I've got my incredible team, um, and then on top of that, I've got my executive level team. Um, so I've got the team that work in the business and then I've got the team that works on the business. And, and they're really there to support me and champion me um, and, and help me do what I do, um, you know, as best as possible. Um, but they give me the advice and guidance um, and the confidence that I may not have as well. So for me, I've slowly built that over the years. Um, now, the first step as a startup, you might hire a coach, you might hire um, a local, you know, you might hire someone who can give you marketing advice or, or strategies, or maybe you need an advisor. Um, and, you know, so that's kind of the first step. And that's what I did. Um, you know, and I and I went through a couple of different coaches, I really just got to experience being uh, learning from other people and, and um, doing different courses and, and knowledge. But now that my business is where it's at now, we've got this amazing team and um, for me, I've just, I've really got these specialist people that, um, you know, they're the ones that have really made the impact 
to my life and business. And I guess this probably wouldn't, um, I like to think it'd be where it is today without them, but I'm also like, I give credit where credit's due. They have been an amazing part of my journey. Um, and so, you know, and if you can find those those board members and they could be friends, they could be, um, they don't necessarily have to be people that you actually hire, but you need to kind of create this board for yourself. Um, and it just allows you to, when you're making, when you have a big decision to make um, about, you know, uh, for instance, when we were going through that big growth period that I was um, talking about, a lot of our systems broke. We had an amazing systems that worked super, like, you know, worked really well. And then, you know, we grew too much that we outgrew those systems. And so we had to make decisions on, all right, should we purchase this software? Um, all right, um, we actually need a business vehicle. Um, what do we do there? Like, is this a decision? Is this the right time to do this? Um, you know, oh, you know, I think we've outgrown our insurances now. We need to, <laughs> we need to do that. Um, you know, there's lot, there's all these decisions that you have to make as well as, you know, oh, we've been niching on the brand and websites, but, you know, why don't we explore doing workshops, training? Why don't we explore opening up different services? Hey, why don't we even open up a whole marketing wing to the business? When I've made these decisions over the years, um, you know, it's been really helpful to have um, kind of, yeah, that sounding board, those those other people that can really just help me through those decisions. Obviously, at the end of the day, I have to go with my gut and I've got to, you know, and I have to recognize that, you know, I've come all this way, um, you know, and, uh, you know, I am capable of making these decisions and, and thinking about things rationally and smartly, um, even though I'm a creative and, you know, you just want to kind of go where the passion takes you as well. Um, but you know, having that that support system just makes a huge difference. Um, and yeah, if you can find those people, it's uh, yeah, definitely a game changer. Right. Well, that's a different um, aspect of a board that I've heard um, a mix of paid experts in or contracted to your team, as well as possibly moving into the mentoring. And I've heard it said mm -hmm. you should need at least four mentors with different um, aspects. So yeah, Great. well done. Yep. One all right. challenging. So there are all the aspects that have made your business successful, but there must have been a few challenges along the way. What's been one of your bigger challenges and how did you um, overcome it or face it? Yeah, I think I've kind of alluded to, to it, um, is uh, big growth. <laughs> growth is hard. Um, it's exciting and it, and it takes you to this next level and it's incredible. But when you're growing, you need to make sure that you're doing it in a sustainable way. Um, you need to make sure that you've you've got a strong foundation, you've got a strong team. Um, and we've found in times that we've we've grown, there's been outside things, there's been things in society in the world that have impacted that. We all went through COVID, um, you know, we've all gone through um, you know, building teams. And for us, the hardest thing has always been finding the right people. Um, and as I, I, I kind of alluded before as well, you know, in the local space, when I decided to build my business here in Bendigo, I just felt like there's this huge, um, you know, we should hire local. Um, and I believe in that. It's something I strongly, strongly believe in. But sometimes you just can't. Sometimes you can't find the, the right person for your team um, in this local area. Sometimes you either have to try and make a way um, try and, you know, figure out a way to, to wait and hold off from hiring for six months. But that could actually do a lot of damage to your business as well if you don't hire. But then in the same token, if you hire the wrong person, that can also create a lot of issues within your organisation if they're not the right, um, if they're not the right fit, if they can't do the work or, um, you know, and we have been really, really fortunate. Um, but I have found that that's one of the hardest things. And I think when I, and I talk to my um, I've got my board. I talk to my board about this um, all the time. We reflect on it. You know, I just had this vision of how I had to do things because this is how everyone else does things. Um, but, you know, and and along the way, I've always been trying to steer that and, you know, trying to follow the traditional business route because that's what I've thought that I've had to do. That's what, you know, that's the, that's the key to success. But then sometimes it's thinking outside of the box. And my board always reminds me, you know, Kira, you're someone who's outside of the box. You're different. You don't have to do things to status quo. Everything you've done so far is proof of that. Um, and so for me, that's why, you know, I'm really proud to say that I, I hire a wide range of contractors. Instead of having, you know, three or four full-time employees, we might have eight different contractors that we work with. And we're actually supporting eight different amazing, talented human beings who also don't fit into, 
you know, they, don't, they, they may not be the type of people that suit, um, you know, being an employee and working nine to five. Um, they might be the type of people that are incredibly creative and free spirits and, but they, they just have this talent that you, you know, my marketing agency needs. Um, so I'm really proud that over the years, I've kind of just let that go a little bit. And um, I think that comes with age and maturity and all of those things as well. And I've just kind of, you know, I can do things my way. Um, I can do things a little bit differently. And um, so we've had some hard challenges there when it comes to staff and learning HR. Oh my gosh. Um, wearing that HR hat is not my favorite thing to do at all. Um, uh, so we've, we've gone through those challenges. We've gone through those growth and, you know, now we're just in such a good spot. We've got incredible contractors that we just love and have been with us for a long time now. Um, and when we grow, you know, we set up to grow in a really great way because we have these contractors in place. They've got, you know, unlimited capacity as well, you know, um, or not unlimited, but, you know, if, if we work with one contractor for 10 hours a week, there's many extra hours in that week that we could potentially work with them. So as we grow, and I suspect um, that our business will continue to grow, it has the year after year, um, we've got capacity to do that in a way that's not going to break our systems again. Um, that's not going to make it really hard to try and fire, try and hire someone um, when, you know, we just can't find the right person, um, which is really hard when you're getting married and you're about to go on your honeymoon and you need to hire. Um, and that was, um, that was one of our big difficulties difficulties um I took three weeks off and um yeah to go on my honeymoon and we had a team member um finish up with us right before it was so hard um and so you know you've got to do what works for you um and, and figure that out along the way but um yeah we're really proud <laughs> of where we're at now and we've got that ability to grow now um sustainably and of course in business, you can scale up or you can scale down according yeah. to your needs. At the time. Your life. So it's all about managing it, isn't it? Now, yeah. I have one last question for you, but I'm just putting everyone on notice that um, we will uh, open up to questions shortly so everyone can start thinking about what they'd like to ask that hasn't been asked or go back and, and get a bit more detail on something that Kira has said or hasn't said yet. But... My last question to you, um, I, I can't believe I'm asking this because you don't look as, you know, you're such a young looking person. Looking back <laughs> on your business journey so far, what would be your best advice to yourself starting out? That is such a hard um, question, such a, such a hard question. Um, but I'd probably just say, don't be afraid to take opportunity, try new things, test new things, um, you know, but stay true to, you know, who you are. Um, definitely stay true to who you are. Um, and don't be afraid to do things your way. And don't lose sight of that in the growth and in the feeling like you need to do what everyone else is doing. That comparison game is really hard. And um, I see a lot of clients face that as well, comparing themselves to other businesses. So, and I went through that a lot too. And I, and I wish that that's something I didn't do. I wish I just, um, for this whole time, stayed in my lane, kept doing amazing work and didn't compare myself to others. Um, because when you do that, it just, yeah, life is better, <laughs> work is better. Um, and you just find out kind of your magic you know, your secret sauce. You just make things up your way. Um, yeah, 